Dina Blue, well, she's had a very, very good season this year, of course, and uh, only came up uh, short against El Fabiolo Leperson last time. That's right. Um, going back to her run uh, last year in the Johnny Henderson, just beaten, mm -hmm. and she missed the last two fences, which is quite uncharacteristic of her. You know, she's a good jumper. Uh, I, I give her a great chance in the, the mare's chase this year. Now, she's going up to two and a half miles, and... I don't think she's ever gone that far before. However, looking back through her pedigree, she's, uh, she's got plenty of stamina on the damn side. So I, I don't think I have any worry about that. And they'll be going that little bit slower too. Uh, so if, but, but I was never really worried about her jumping anyhow. Uh, I thought those two mistakes last year were very uncharacteristic. So, I, you know, she must have a really good chance going mm. there. And they uh, compete in open company this season, of course, on the back of that great run at Cheltenham last year. She's taken on likes of Phil Dore, Gentleman to Me, and of course El Fabiola. The experience of that racing at two miles must be a big plus going to Cheltenham. I think so. I mean, she's taken on the best in this country and um, dropping back into Mayor's company really is, is going to be in her favour, I think. The Mayor's Chase new initiative relatively at Cheltenham, but it's been a lucky race for you in, in previous years. It's always a race we, uh, we aim for. You know, we've been very lucky with mares and we always try and source nice mares. And, um, you know, the initiative uh, from either the BHA and HRI to promote mares races, mm -hmm. I always think it's only jump racing catching up with flat racing. Flat racing has had its two classics for mares mm -hmm. uh, for hundreds of years. And uh, we're, we're just catching up and promoting mares. And as we see in France, when the mares are promoted, and you breed from good mares, you get better stock. She's a six-year-old last year, seven this year. You'd like to think she's only getting to her peak, and uh, she did take her racing very well last season. I think so. She's never given me any cause for concern that she might be going over the top or anything. She keeps progressing all the time, and I'm sure progression up to a longer tip might show in better light. El Fabiolo, Willie, um, he was so impressed when winning that at the Dublin Racing Festival, and uh, all rose lead today, champion chase. He was, uh, went down to the hilly way, I, you know, he didn't impress me in the hilly way, uh, he came right, uh, then we were heading for the Clarence House which was switched, didn't suit us, uh, suit us better to go to Dublin Racing Festival and he put in a fantastic performance there, mm. uh, all you know, hoping to get, just get to Cheltenham now in one piece. Uh, another horse looking at his pedigree by Spanish Moon out of a Santa Saint Mare. You'd think he should won three miles, so it just shows how fast he's able to get through the air, that his jumping ability, I think, is able to bring him back in trip. Um, very exciting ride for anyone sitting on him, I think, you know, you'd um, sort of horse you'd want to take out your license again for a friend, <laughs> I think. Uh, yeah, he's, you know, he's just, he's just a natural uh, when they come down to jumping, so... Mm. Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> he jumps well on the day now. When you say something like that, it probably put mm. the markers on the He's yeah. had the experience of running at the old track, of course, last year, and he won the Arkle in great style. He does have that tendency to hit a fence on occasions. He did a cork in his season debut as well. He did, but I think he was just idling. Um, I'm not sure that he... That I'm worried about that, mm. you know, I think... Uh, Is that when, a learning when, thing with him? Do you think he's learning on the job or...? Uh, of course they all do, uh, they learn on the job and nothing like uh, fast racing to bring out li any little things that they have, but I'm, I'm very happy in his ability to jump. He's only had 11 starts in his career, quite remarkable to be where he's at at this stage. I suppose I hadn't thought about that, but it is. Um, and, uh, you know, so hope that he can keep, keep building on that. Fact to file is on good terms with himself here this morning, Willie, and in her pre-season stable tour, you said you were going to skip hurling to go chasing. It's all going well. So far, so good. Um, got beaten first time by American Mike. Um, a lot of ours think needed the run. Uh, look at him. <laughs> He's the friendliest horse. From the first time I ever met him, he was just so friendly, like a big teddy bear, I think. Uh, he's, um, he's so nice. Uh, yeah, and then, then went on to, was it Leopardstown? Mm -hmm. uh, won his beginners, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. then uh, I know um, he, he won his next race easy in Leopardstown, <coughs> and when Gaelic Warrior sort of misfired or backfired. And, um, but I was, uh, sorry, um, you know, but he had, he, he's another horse that, uh, he, that, that has a lot of ability. Uh, he's by Polyglot, an unusual sire that he was champion sire on the flat mm. and over jumps in France. 
uh, out of a nice uh, French pedigree. But uh, when he won his point to point in Bell Harbour, he beat a horse called Asian Master, who's going to run a cracker, I think, in Cheltenham, who's been very good his two runs for us. Uh, you know, so he's um, he, 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 he'll go now for the Brown Advisory, but he's a horse that I put in the could be anything brigade mm. when he was second in his bumper in Cheltenham. I, I thought a lot of him all the time as a bumper horse, and uh, just with his size and scope, I decided to skip hurdling. I said if he if he didn't take the chases, that we could always go back and have a year novice hurdling. But I felt at his age, I wanted to uh, get on jumping with him and. Look like it's paying off. At the time. That run yeah. in the Challenge Bumper, he's beaten probably for speed by a dream to share the flatbread horse, but yeah. it was a huge performance by a horse that had won over two and a half at Christmas prior to that. I, I thought so, yeah. You know, but that's what I've thought of this horse all the time. He's just mm. a horse that sometimes a horse grabs you when he comes into the stable. And this is what I loved his ability. I love his uh, attitude in the stable. He's so quiet. He's um, he's got a lovely attitude, and you know when you can have horses like that, and they can tra transfer that attitude to their racing, uh, I think it's very good as well that they, they relax, which means he's going to stay uh, in these races, and he's a lot easier to ride. I think he's a real what I call a push button horse. You pull him out, he goes, and um, you know if you want to relax him, he'll just settle in as well. So uh, at least that's what I hope he's going to do for Mark. When he gets to Cheltenham, he hasn't seen a lot of horses over fences as such, but the experience of run, running twice at Leopardstown, it's a, quite a test in its own right. It is, and I mean, when Gaelic Warrior and Factor File took off <coughs> down by that fence at the reservoir and down over the next two, you could see Mark saying, you know, we're just, I think we're going too fast and, <laughs> and hauling, hauling him back, getting him back on the, getting him back to a reasonable gallop. And probably Gaelic Warrior were. Warrior just did too much at the time, but um, it was setting itself up to be a fantastic race until Gaelic Warrior made that little mistake and just <clears throat> put him out of the race. Um, but this, you know, uh, I can't say enough about this fellow. He goes for the Brown Advisory and we'll see what happens. Well, he has galloped in the champs since that uh, great win, the Irish Gold Cup at the Dolan Race Festival. He's very good. Uh, looking forward to going across to Cheltenham. They've been doing most things right at home, so um, a few final gallops now, and then load up and happy, you know, hope, hope everything goes right on the day. This time last year, the question mark in a lot of people's minds was about the trip in the Gold Cup. He proved that was not definitely an issue. Yeah, that surprised me, uh, because, you know, he won three mile novice hurl in Punchestown as a novice, and uh, I thought trip absolutely no problem you know but then when you do get that extra two furlongs up the hill in Cheltenham three and a quarter miles uh, it can but still to win over three miles as a novice I felt three and a quarter shouldn't be any problem to him my biggest worry going to Cheltenham last year would he be too keen mm. and would he get involved too much in um in a battle and uh, <clears throat> but Paul rode him away from the race really and just the one thing I said to Paul going out was, I think you're on the fastest horse, and I think you'll stay. Just, you know, if you, if you can keep it a little bit of powder dry, and that's what happens. The, everyone, you know, the, the Gold Cup is a, a race for stairs, and they, and it always run at a huge gallop, and um, it was the same last year. And Paul just landed him into the race. You know, you need a bit of luck. There was one or two horses that mm. fell that we that Paul missed. And uh, could have easily, I think Henry de Bromhead's horse was probably taken out of the race about the fifth last. Uh, <coughs> our fellow missed that. And, but you need all those little bits of luck and running for those type of races. How did you come back from Punchestown after John Durkin chase when he got beaten at season debut? Yeah, I mean, he was beaten in Punchestown after Cheltenham. And then we went to the John Durkin. And... Um, you know, I think probably just we, we hadn't the right tactics with them. Uh, and then Paul was keen to change tactics, which he did in the Savills at Christmas and for the Paddy Power Irish Gold Cup in Leopardstown as well. And the horse seems to be back on his game now altogether. The change from the hold-up tactics to positive tactics really seems to spark him up with his jumping, everything just clicked back into gear. Yeah, I think he's enjoying himself a lot more, but I just felt that as a hurdler he was he was too keen and I didn't want him just 
uh, galloping, uh, you know, galloping himself into the ground, he might still win. But horses can't take too much of that. You know, you'll do it once or twice, but uh, over those extended trips, a lot of horses never recover. Mm. And you know, I feel I like to get, like to have a, a career with a horse rather than just one win. And um, so, you know, if you fail with the those tactics well you can always go up and do the other mm. thing but um, you know it's always another day I feel uh, but I, I always like to try and use tactics especially for these stairs that a horse can come back year after year. Album photo won two gold cups uh, this horse bidding to do the same. Yeah you need a lot of luck you need a lot of luck but uh, he's he started off the right way this season and yeah so let's hope he can continue. Great to see Lossie out here again, Willie. Uh, this time last year, she was en route to winning the Triumph Hurl. Yeah, uh, hopefully this year she's en route to winning the Mayor's Hurl. <laughs> um, she was very good in Cheltenham the last day in the, in the International Hurl. Um, I kept a light campaign. I, I just those sometimes those busy juveniles take a little while to recover. And um, so looking at her performance the other day, however, looking at the performance of Gallimar, so. <laughs> It, that didn't work out, but um, looking at this one's performance the other day, it should be onwards and upwards for her. Um, I just feel, being a five-year-old, uh, I didn't want to go for the champion hurdle. Uh, I, I'm happier to take it in baby steps, and possibly uh, she'll be good enough next year to have a good crack at the champion hurdle. She had a tendency last year to be keen on occasions. She definitely got better at racing and I tell him on the back of that layoff, she was pretty relaxed uh, given how long she was off the track. Exactly. I, I was happy, you know, that she didn't, she didn't get too wound up. Travelling across to England and going through somewhere like Cheltenham for the first run, lots of horses could get wound up, but mm. Paul kept her nice and relaxed and uh, she kept everything for the last couple of furlongs and when he set her alight, she just took off as we all saw so um, there's there's a nice engine there and um, hopefully we can mind it now and get through this year's uh, you know it's, it's not going to be a, a walkover by any means there's some good opposition from England and um, she had one or two from her of her stable mates uh, as well but um, seeing what we saw uh, she's probably the one to beat I think. Great to see Stateman here this morning, Willie, and uh, he's had a, an identical Irish campaign to last season again here this year. Yeah, he's doing everything right. I think he's doing everything better. Mm. He's only seven. Uh, I think he's improving, he's maturing as well. And, um, you know, I expect him to... I, I thought his run at Christmas was the best of all, you know, best of his life. Now, a lot of people said that his last run at DRF was better. Not so sure. Uh, I think things fell too easily into his hand that day. Um, I think his Christmas run was good. I think his run at DRF was, uh, was the best of his, sorry, I think his Christmas run was the best of his life and uh, DRF was very good, but I think he's on an upward curve. Mm. Uh, it's going to be hard to overturn Constitution Hill, but if I can keep him in the same sort of form he's in and th get that little bit of improvement out of him, we'll hopefully give him a race. Paul said after the Dumb Race Festival that he, never t he just feels he wasn't quite at his peak at Cheltenham last year. Would you subscribe to that theory? I know Constitution Hill was well, in the Well, I thought I had zone. him ready going there. <laughs> and, um, but Paul's riding him and he knows what mm. he feels. And if he, f I mean, I certainly think he's better than last year. So uh, maybe Paul is looking at that with the hindsight of the three runs this year, uh, that he is a better horse. You know, I, I think he's a better horse mm. than he is. And well, I, I don't know. Um, Hope he's right. <laughs> Game plan wise, how would you, how do you approach it, horse I'll, like I'll let, I'll let Paul sort all that one out. You know, a lot will depend on what the others are doing. So, usually Paul will sort that out. We, we'll have a chat beforehand, but we won't. Uh, you know, there's nothing going to be set in stone. And when you get down to the start in a race, who knows who what way horses are going to line up, and what the opposition is going to do. So we have to. Um, Paul will figure it out. Your previous winner as a champion hurdle hurricane flying any power just does turn seven. Can you see that improvement with age and experience in him? I, I think, yeah. Uh, they, you know, we'd, um, I, I think you know, age is huge in jump racing, you know, the, um, especially when you're going a bit of a trip in softer ground, maturity is worth a lot.
Uh, Jade de Grugy, another Dr. Dino-like statement, uh, had, had three runs in her life, one in AQPS bumper in France, then came uh, one in Leopardstown at Christmas, and back we, we upped her hugely in grade to the Sol Arena, and she uh, won quite easily as well in that. So, uh, you know, while she's not a big, you know, she hasn't, a, I don't think she's matured mm. yet. To do what she's doing uh, really surprised me because uh, it's just pure ability rather than strength. I think she's going to be a, a much stronger mayor. Well, I hope she'll be a much stronger mayor next year. And um, she's a lively candidate for the, for the mayor's novice hurdle, doing what she's done mm. so far. The way she jumped onto the bridle at the second last in Ferry was very impressive. She went from being half asleep at one set of light, she really latched on and travelled strongly. That's right. She's, you know, she's unremarkable at home. She, uh, she's very cool in herself and doesn't show lots of gears. We probably don't ask her to show us, but uh, and the same in her races. Just when she switches on, she switches on, and that Dr. Dino speed comes in. Fasal Vega, well, he's getting a little bit of entertainment for the dogs here this morning. Yeah. How has he been since Leopardstown? <coughs> I'm happy enough with them since Leopardstown. I think I've a bit of a way to go with them. Uh, not sure I've had him right. He, he was sort of disappointing at Christmas ran a better race at DRF uh, and I'm still not happy that I have him where I want him. Um, he's in the Arkell, he's in the Turners and you know I, I just I'm much happier with a lot of other horses where I am uh, at the moment undecided about this fellow he's just going to have to do some really good work between now and then and I'm just I'm just going to have to throw everything at him if he's able to take it he takes it if he's not uh, well, it mightn't appear, but we'll see what happens. Ballyburn, really, a uh, very, very good campaign last year. And Bumper was very impressed when winning at, at uh, the Punchestown Festival last season. Yes, even though it was just the ordinary winner's bumper, um, Dancing City, a graded winner, was behind him, and Slade Steel, uh, another graded winner, you know. So that, um, that was a hot bumper. It just shows you how hot uh, they are, considering all the champion bumper horses were in the other race. <laughs> and yet, um, that race threw up those three horses. Uh, this fellow got beaten the first time, probably my fault. Paul wanted different tactics. I asked him to drop him in because uh, I was just afraid he's so keen all the time. But but he he settled well and um, came out. Then Christmas, you know, uh, he did. Paul did what he wanted to do, and the same. He was very forward on him uh, at DRF, and he won very well beating Firefox. You know, so. Uh, he has an engine. Paul, I know, has huge confidence in him. Mm. Uh, looking at his pedigree by Fleming Firth out of an Arctic um, slave mare, uh, to me that screams stamina. So, you know, I have, I have no problem going a longer trip with him, uh, but the speed he shows on the track, mm. you know, he's very quick over his hurdles. He's, he can gallop. At, at a huge speed from the outset, just gallop horses into the ground. Um, and if, if Paul wants to settle him, he can settle and quicken off a, a, off a pace as well. So uh, I'm not sure what way to go with him, but he's, uh, he's got a lot of things you want in a horse. I'd say everything you want in a horse. Dropping down to two miles at Dublin Race Festival, it was quite noticeable halfway down the back how well he was going with it himself. He was firmly in his comfort zone at all stages at that trip. Yeah, he sort of reminds me of Faheen, mm. the way he can gallop and jump. And I think if he met a hurdle wrong, he'd just gallop out through it. He's that sort of an attitude. He puts the head down and just goes at everything. He's very brave and... Um, you know, I love that cross, Fleming for Arctic Slave, so uh, this fellow's got it all, I think. And the ownership as well, uh, Ronnie Barton, well-known colours as well, of course, uh, and has a plenty of success with good horse, but Dave Manasse got a big kick out of his horse winning that grade one at the Down Race Festival. I, I think so. Dave has a couple of nice horses in racing, but uh, Ronnie is probably used to having more um, good horses, classy horses, and uh, yeah, he owns Banbridge, who's probably favourite for the Ryanair. And Statler, who um, we might go down the cross-country route with him, we'll see. Uh, you know, he has some nice horses. Two good guys to have in a horse, anyhow. Yeah.